Welcome to Looptopia, where we're building our own utopian homestead. Today, we are putting together a greenhouse. This is kind of a Amazon low-cost, budget-friendly greenhouse called Orlike. I know, strange name, but uh, we have a 10 by 20, but I haven't seen that size on Amazon. But I'm assuming that the small ones go together the same way. The problem is we looked around for videos and there were none. Uh, not a good one to explain it. So I'm gonna take you through what we learned, kind of trial and error to figure out these instructions to save you some time. One warning before we start. The kit comes with these black uh, plastic plugs and the plugs actually go on the ends of the pipes so it doesn't rip the plastic apart. You'll, if you open the kit, you'll see them. Do yourself a favor and put the plugs in on the ends now before you assemble it, like pick your ends and put them and then they won't get deformed. We did it, I wish I had known that because we did it the hard way. We deformed all the pipes and we had to bend them back and put the plugs in. So do that step first. So it comes in a box like this and there's the covering. The covering looks pretty good quality actually. For the price we paid, it's, it's quite good. And the bars all have numbers on them. They're like printed numbers on the ends of the bars. And then it does have instructions, but it is kind of hard to understand. It's a lot of trial and error. What you have to do though, is you have to prep your land. Now, if you're blessed to have a backhoe or, you know, a dozer or something, this will take, this will be pretty quick. But if not, uh, like us, we had to shovel some dirt in here. I, I raised it up so, you know, it had some drainage and wouldn't flood uh, and Tamp the edges. The reason though I'm going to try to explain this is if you were just to lay it on your grass, if it's not pretty level, the thing won't zip right or close right or fit right. So you've got to at least level the edges. The inside can be, you know, you could dig out a place to walk or whatever, but the edges need to be level. So I wanted to show you that before we started. One other tip is we live in the south with tremendous weed pressure and overgrowth. So we're going to put down landscaping fabric all the way around this thing. This stuff is worth the money. It's not that expensive and man does it make your life easier. So we're going to put it inside as well. Because we are going to use raised beds in, sorry, uh, we're going to use containers in here. So we're not going to really be digging into the ground. If you were digging in the ground, I'd still put the fabric where you walk. All right, so it's a good idea to lay out the, the frame and this is how it starts because it's really not a good explanation in the directions. The right side is actually different than the left side and I'm, I'm facing the door. So every time I talk from now on, I'm talking about as you enter. The right side, you will put these number two poles with the tapered, in, oh, sorry, number three poles with the tapered ends upright and they go on the outside and you'll notice they're all on the outside of the ground pole. Um, all the poles on the ground are the same except one. So these are fives, but right after your first five is a four. And then the rest are five, 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 all the way down. And it's the same on the other side. These poles on the right side go on the outside. On the left side, they go on the inside. So you'll see them go on the inside except the corners. The corners still go on the outside. So on the left hand, the corners are on the outside, everything else is on the inside. When you do these number six poles, the ones with the little sandwich ends, these are on the inside, on the left, and they go in between the poles. And on the right, they're on the outside. So as long as you get that straight, you're good to go. The other thing is you're not supposed to attach the seven, eight, and seven. I think you do that at a later step after you lock everything down. The next thing that's gonna go on is the hoops. We're gonna start building the hoops on the sides. One thing I forgot to mention, in this beginning phase, you're using the same bolt and the same nut and you they are the i think they're number nine bolts 
But do yourself a favor. This is a probably a two-man job. It is very difficult with one person. But I've got a number 10 wrench to hold it, to hold the screws, and I put on a bit that is an Allen key bit that fits in. This has been a lifesaver. Do that because it comes with Allen keys, but oh my goodness, I can't imagine doing this all by hand. Uh, and it's very hard to line everything up with one person. We've been doing it as a team. Now this is step two. This is weird again because the right side is going to be different than the left. The right side's simple. You put everything on the inside, and obviously you want to put the bolts so the sharp pieces are in the inside so it doesn't tear up the, uh, the covering. And you're just going to use that rule all the way around. What you have to do, the corners are tricky. You're putting four things together. You're putting the pole on the right side. This goes in. You have the brace that comes in between. And then another pole on the inside ridge. So these poles will all stay on the inside. And it just repeats all the way to the end. You have to line all these poles, you put these poles together first, then put the bolt through. So again, it's kind of a two-man job. This will become rickety and janky, and we had to like brace it so it wouldn't fall down. And then my partner Lorelai came up with the idea of why don't we just put one hoop in to hold it? And that worked really well. What gets weird is the left side. The left side, this outside pole is on the outside, right? But this is going to be on the inside, this is going to be on the inside, and then it crisscrosses, and then they will go on the outside the rest of the way until we get to the end where it crisscrosses back in and you set it up. So the left side is different because it crisscrosses twice, and the other thing I would say is oh, the uh, side thing, this all follows the same pattern with the five, four, five, five, five. And the reason that happens is because there are two tapered ends and they had to put a piece in between to turn the tapered ends so, uh, so it all works out. So that's why there's one weird piece in the middle of all these. So what's going to happen in step three is we're just going to repeat this process up top. So for step three, the easiest thing to do is start by just, you know, fitting all the uh, hoops together and then adding the crossbars. Then everything's a lot more stable. There is one surprise we found though. Uh, one of these did not get punched all the way through, so now I have to go drill it out. Thanks for wasting my time. But, uh, you know, other than that, everything's been good. All right, so now we are done with uh, part of step three, we're on the B side of step three. These are in. Now there's something really confusing here. The directions, remember how the bottom one crisscrossed on the left side? But the directions show everything on the inside for the next step. So the directions have counter conflicting problems. So we tried it both ways and I think the original way we set it up where it crisscrossed the bottom is correct. And then on the left side, you put these on the inside. Um, everything else should work out. So for one reason, I don't know why the bottom ring is completely different, but we tried to reverse it and it was so much pressure on them that it didn't work. The other problem I wish I had known about is I tightened these too hard and it deformed them. And now the caps don't fit. So I take them off, hammer them out and reform them. So if you're putting these together, don't crunch the tubes on the ends. So the last stage is you put the uh, plastic on and the plastic's actually pretty thin. I don't see getting more than a year or two out of this, maybe three, I don't know, depending on your conditions. And if you take it down during the summer, um, which I assume you would, but if we baby this, we would probably get that. What I did like about it, uh, the plastic went on fairly easy. There's only one door. So you do the door, you take it around, it velcros in on the, uh, the edges, and that's about it. Um, other than that, it's pretty easy. So let me show you, this is our first night with it, and I'll, I'll show you now. I did notice there's some condensation. So as you get closer, 
it's steaming up inside. It was, well, the reason we put this up is even though we're in South Carolina, we had some crazy weird Arctic blast that dropped to 36 last night. So we rushed and got this thing up and got our citrus in just in time. So hopefully they're still alive. Let's find out. We pinned this flap down with a brick just to keep the critters out and it from blowing around. The zippers are only towards the outside. And wow, when you open this up, you can feel the blast of heat come out. Uh, but the zippers are kind of chintzy, so you really need to hold it when you, when you zip. I have a feeling the zippers aren't going to last real long. Wow. It's steamed up. My camera's steamed up. Um, can this thing work? Okay, so it's like a tropical rainforest. I had to unsteam the camera. It might be steamy right now, but according to this, it is only 9 in the morning and we're at 85 degrees in here. That's insane. It's 45 degrees it's outside. It's 45 degrees outside. That is a 40 degree bump. Um, uh, I think it's fogging up again. All right, so that's insane. I'm going to have to move fast because the camera keeps fogging up. The tie downs you get are ridiculous. They're stupid. Uh, they're like little candy canes. So we use dog ties, the kind you screw down in the ground, and we tie the bottom frames with some paracord. We also pinned, you kind of overlap it, and we pin these down with fabric staples. The same stuff we use on the, the black tarp. And I think we're fogging again. So I'm not exaggerating, this is a tropical rainforest in here. It is crazy how moist it is. And I mean, this is amazing for what this cost. Yeah, there's some chintzy things about it. It does have a lot of windows, which is nice in the spring. You can ventilate some, and then in the summer, we'll just have to take it off. One thing I did like is it has a solid ridge beam. So hopefully when it rains, it won't take puddles and get wrecked like a lot of the cheap greenhouses do. We might consider putting a wire on this if it doesn't work, but so far it's been fine. Uh, so those are the big suggestions. Actually tie these things down to the ground. Do not use the little chintzy staples they give you. They're ridiculous. Pin these down, pin the lips down uh, with the fabric staples. Those really helped. Uh, any other suggestions? No, I think that's it. I think that's it. Man, this is hot in here. I'm getting out. It is 85 or something. Or close. <laughs> that's insane. It is 40 degrees outside. Wow. Whoa, what a difference. So here's a kind of a last view of uh, our initial setup. So you can see how it rolls up. And because the floor is black, it definitely traps a lot more heat. This is worth it. And we put in some black pickle barrels. So they are generators of heat. They'll heat up in the day. Again, it was 85, but I know at night it's not going to be anything close to that. So we put the grapefruit next to the water barrel because put your more sensitive things next to the barrels. The strawberries probably shouldn't be there, but the orange tree. Um, and then out on the outsides are the stuff that can handle it better. And basically what we did is the reason these look so ratty is they were outside and uh, they were pretty much close to death, these tomatoes and peppers, because of the cold weather. And I decided to dig them up and put them in. And I'm hoping that we can keep them going in the winter, and then I can propagate the heck out of them so I don't have to buy stuff anymore. So that's it. That's the whole setup. Oh, lastly, <laughs> here's the hooks. The entire... This is what I said. It's like a Christmas decoration, a candy cane. This is the entire hook system they send to hold the entire greenhouse down. This is a joke. Don't do this or you're going to lose your greenhouse. You know, again, use the what we did with the dog screws. Really sink them in. And I think that'll, that'll help a lot against the wind. Because even though this is a high tunnel where it's rounded, it'll still catch a lot of wind. For the price on this, this is an amazing setup. I mean, yeah, you got to put some decent anchors in it. And uh, the plastic's kind of chintzy. Maybe I should buy um some other plastic as a backup but i mean i can't even buy the pieces to make this for anywhere close as the kit i'm actually really impressed i like it i'm really impressed with how hot it is in there it is a tropical jungle um i'm i'm blown away with what we paid now i get that it's not as good as a stationary greenhouse but for the budget man i can buy two or three of these things uh, and still be way under for what I'd spend for a fraction of a regular greenhouse. So this is an awesome buy. I will link it in the Amazon, 
Amazon link. I don't know if you can get the size anymore, but you can still get the brand. That being said, we really appreciate it when you shop through Amazon. It's basically the only way our channel makes any money anymore. YouTube has blacklisted us. So uh, nothing, we don't get paid by YouTube anymore. But the thing about this is uh, whenever you shop on Amazon, if you go through the link first and then you check out within 24 hours, we get credit and you don't even have to buy the tent. You can look at the tent and go shop for anything else. So it costs you nothing and it really helps our channel. Because what we do is we use that Amazon buddy money to buy uh, more greenhouses and stuff to test out. So thanks so much for hanging out with us. Remember if you want to see our blacklisted and, and videos that are censored here on YouTube, you go over to, uh, we're on Brighteon and Odyssey if you want to see our real videos. We're over there, you'll find that description in the link. Love you guys, this is a great buy. Absolutely buy this.